Right, so we're going to jump in and start off exactly where we left off last time. So obviously the head's on now, cams are in. We've got to take this cover back off to time it back up. So we've got to jack the car up now, or put on the lift, whatever we want to do. Uh, probably easier just to jack it up um, as there's cars on the lift at the minute. So just uh, jack the car up, get this cam belt side sorted out. So obviously there's a lot of stuff to take off down here. Water pump was replaced quite recently and they were a really hard to find part and really expensive. You normally get them refurbished. So there's no point in touching the water pump. So we're just going to replace the cam belt instead. Um, cam belt is in actually really good condition. You can see how good condition the cam belt's in. Uh, but we're going to replace it. Obviously no brainer at the time. There's no cracks, no damage or nothing in it. So uh, we're just going to get on with stripping that left hand side down. It's quite hard to film it, so I'll do what I can. But uh, just going to jack the car up now, get some of the covers off and uh, time it up. So on these cams, got no woodruff keys. So it means that the actual cams and the pulleys themselves don't lock up. So you have to loosen these bolts off, you time it up, then you lock them up and torque them back up. So that's what we're going to get on with now. So I've just got to get some of uh, these covers off on this side here. Uh, you can see this one's already been cracked in past. I don't know if that was when it was removed last when the cam belt was done. See, I've just supported the engine. Obviously got a rubber protection underneath that, but it's a steel sump, so that's all good. Uh, I've just got to remove these covers so I can get to the actual um, bottom pulley itself. So that's got a nut on it I've got to undo. That's probably going to be gunned up really, really tight. So I'm expecting that to be a bit of a, a git to get off. So with them covers removed, you've pretty much got clear access to this uh, actual cam cover itself. So you've got a couple of bolts in down here and here. I'll show you them from underneath. So with the bottom pulley bolt obviously loose, um, this actual pulley itself is properly seized on that crank and I don't want to pry on it too much. I've pried on it so far, but I've got a pull a tool that I'm going to get in there. I just had to remove the arch line in because obviously it was in the way sitting across here so I can get the puller tool on properly. So we've got the engine all stripped down now, so you can see all the cam belts off everything. I'll show you all the different timing tools and the marks that you need to time this engine up. So on the camshaft then you can see you've got these grooves in there and they can only go one way. So you can see they're offset. You can see the bottom part's got a, a, a more thickness and then at the top. So if I spun that over, the actual timing bar wouldn't go in there. So it only go in one way. So it only goes in with them marks at the top. So you can see there it slots in nicely and you just have to turn that one on this side quickly so there you go that's how the bar sits in like that and it sits flat against the head so that's the cams locked up and then down here for the crankshaft you've got this bolt here that's next to the crank sensor trigger so you just take that one out and then up here you've got three different lengths of timing tools on this one it is the longer one they're all different sizes you can see here so on this actual engine itself you just put this longer pin in screw that in like that and then moving around to the crankshaft on the pulley as so you can see here what I've done is I've moved the woodruff key slightly offset so that then where I can turn this clockwise with the pulley on it will lock up against the crankshaft pin so I've got, just got to get the uh, cover on first and then get the belt on and then we'll be able to put that pulley on I'll show you exactly what I mean right, so we've got a fresh cam belt kit for the car um, tensioner, pulley, idler pulley and bolt and everything because it all has to be replaced so we've got the full kit, proper Deco kit as well so that's an OEM one, Deco and gates pretty much OEM items so nice fresh belt on there to go on so you can see here the belt that actually come off it has done no miles at all there's no marks, no damage to it at all but while it's off we might as well replace it
with the locking pin on the crankshaft side, you literally just turn this crank clockwise now to it comes up against the pin. So you can see it's turning and it's jammed against it now. So if I go back, you'll see that's up against the pin now. So don't go onto it too hard because you will bend the pin. So that's wedged up. So that's time now. But there is another timing mark that I can show you on the engine, on the pulley itself. So on the pulley, there's a little notch. You can just about see there. So that notch there has got to line up under here with the mark on site on the block itself. So you can see there with the timing mark, it lines up perfectly. So we know that's that top dead center. So here's another way to do it. You can obviously put a bar in, take the plug out at number one. It's always number one is top dead center. You can actually move this up and down like that. But as soon as the cylinder comes to its peak, you can see it hits the locking pin, so that's absolutely perfect. We know it's timed up correctly. So these camshaft pulleys, they don't have a locking dowel on them, so they actually spin. So you can see that these will actually spin like that. So you actually torque these bolts up and that's what locks the camshafts in place. So on the tensioner, you turn it anti-clockwise. Oh, so that's the cam belt all tensioned up. So you can see here on the tensioner, that's the correct position for the tensioner with an arrow pointing right in the middle of that rectangle. Um, just torque down all the bolts to 25 Newton meters like they're supposed to be. The pulleys are still loose, so we've just got to get the locking tool on that, do up these, and then got to do up this crank pulley to 115 Newton meters. And then that's everything timed up. So it's very simple. We can pull out this locking bar now because everything's at top dead center. Pull out your pin, torque everything up. So as I said to you in a previous episode, we uh, got an ST170 cam cover gasket. We've got a fresh one now, Victor Ryan's one, genuinely OE quality. So we're going to fit that, replace this old one. There's nothing wrong with this one, but you might as well replace it while it's off. The engine's all timed up, we've got all the covers on everything now, so you've got the cam belt covers and everything's on, the engine mount's on, um, and now we're going to move on to the inlet side of things, so I'm going to get all the leads and everything in. Um, on this um, inlet side of things, there's hoses and pipes and everything going everywhere, so many hoses going into the inlet manifold, so we're going to change the inlet manifold gaskets, because uh, they were leaking obviously as you see, and then we're going to change the seals as well on the uh, injectors for Cosworth funds, which are a little bit thicker and they seal a little bit better inside the inlet manifold. So you can see here on the back of this inlet manifold how many vacuum ports there is. It's literally ridiculous amounts and you've got the idle valve on the back. Uh, there's a lot going on. Obviously we've got individual seals here which uh, we're going to change out. We've got brand new ones of them. Uh, but yeah, you can see the amount of hosing that's unnecessary going to this intake manifold.
So the inlet gasket's all been changed over for new items and you can see it's a good job we did because they were literally just splitting apart as I was taking them out. They've all gone brittle and they just wasn't adequately sealing properly. So I managed to grab a few more bits from folds for the car, some nice genuine parts. So you've got that gasket that goes between obviously the manifold, the stock manifold and the tubular manifold, exactly the same flange on it. So that gasket that was blown out on that. And also we've got some brand new studs as well. These are from folds proper ZTEC studs. So it's nice just to have fresh parts on the car just to make things a lot easier. No point messing around with rusty stuff. Um, these bolts are, I think these studs are only like four pound each. So I just managed to get these 67 vacuum hoses on the back of this inlet manifold, you can see there. Um, so we get this inlet manifold bolted on there. It's very tight against the bulkhead with all that stuff. It's a lot of unnecessary business if this was like, a project card, narrow that lot all down. I know that some of it's map sensor, blah, 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 but it's really not needed that amount of vacuum hosing. Right, so I've got to swap these injector seals over. As you can see, they're all split and pitted and they was causing a vacuum leak. You can see where they're all damaged up. So we've got these brand new Cosy ones. So these are off the, uh, obviously the YB Bosch injectors. And these are a little bit thicker than the stock ones, so they seal a little bit better in the manifolds. I use these on the Zlet injectors as well. Just a little bit thicker, create a better seal for the, uh, obviously when you're running high boost applications. So we're gonna get them swapped over. When we had the car on the diagnostics before we pulled it apart, we noticed there was a discrepancy with the actual throttle position. It wasn't relaying from the throttle pedal very well, so we went out and got a brand new fold item. So we're just gonna swap that over now while the throttle body is off, it makes it a lot easier. Well, that don't match up, so that's a foul. So I'm gonna to have to get a new one of them. I have to put this old rubber back on. I have to swap it over when it's on the car. This is the one that was supplied by Folds, and obviously it's the incorrect one. Looks nothing like it. So send that back, get a new one, put this on for now. So I just quickly test fitted the manifold on there with them new studs and it's quite annoying actually because the studs actually hit the manifold. You can see here they're too long. Could actually shorten the studs but I think I'm just going to use bolts it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, it's unfortunate really that it does work that way but you can see there it's not going to clear so I'm not going to be able to push that on. Quite annoying really because I wanted to have them nice fresh studs on there but what can you do? So the manifolds obviously I've got to tap out that um, exhaust housing on the turbo itself and then we better get that on there. So I don't want to put this thermostat housing back on because you can see here this seal has had it. Um, so just going to literally replace the whole thermostat housing and thermostat itself because you get the seal in and with it and it's just a fresher item. So that's obviously been on there since new and thermostats need replacing anyway. So this one here is a thank you for everyone that's made it to the end of the episode. Obviously I try to include little snippets at the end of each episode so make sure you watch it till the end and you might see another little bonus issue. So obviously I've showed you this one a lot. This is the Mark one that we're gonna be making to like a rally car replica with bubble arches, everything. You can see, started cutting out the arches, trimming the arches so that the bubble arches can be put on there. And as you've seen, tons of panels and parts that are gonna be going onto it. So that's gonna be getting on with, but it's obviously not gonna be done anytime soon. We've got another car that's coming in at the minute. It's a rally car. That's gonna be getting done before um, retro rides at, um, Goodwood. So if you want to come and see that car, it's not going to be painted. It's just going to be done, put a new engine in it, etc., and restored. This is the car that we ain't showed you yet. This one here. So this is a genuine Mexico. It's going to be brung back to like standard stock, just a really clean car. So basically, it's going to be still be red. Uh, the decals are going to still be obviously the black decals, but the vinyl top that's on it, that's going to be getting removed, and it's just going to have full interior in it. So you can see it's a very clean car body works very good you can see inside here i mean it's it's better than most mark 3 mark 4 escorts that are out there now so look how clean it is inside 
obviously it's had a few repairs but is a very solid car it's going to have a full interior as i said it's not going to be roll caged and bucket seats in this one it's going to be stock red color like that you can see it's the mexico with the mexico arches these are genuine cars these ain't no like replicas so if you're looking forward to seeing this one um it's going to be on the channel as well but we also have another one that's going to be coming in so we've got three escorts on the go at the minute uh, this is the stock engine that's going to be going into it it's a 1.6 pinto engine fully rebuilt just sitting there waiting to go in all like the rs2000 bits all over it um obviously i'll do another episode on that run you through it so i'm just trying to crack through the episodes at the minute get as much footage as i can for you guys um you have to bear with me i know the uploads are all over the place but um i'm only one person i'm trying to do as much work and as much editing and videos as possible so if you're looking forward to seeing this one as well this one will be on the channel very soon so i'm just going to be like working on cars getting the um focus done and then we'll move on to these escorts uh, obviously these escorts are big projects but very fun projects and you all know that when these things are done they are absolutely beautiful probably this is the um biggest project at the minute uh, then it's this one and we've got another one coming in which I will show you in probably the next episode it's going to be coming over here so look forward to that so if you want to carry on watching these projects uh, and you're into the Ford RS's or the old Ford's there's going to be plenty coming up so make sure you subscribe I know you can see minis and all sorts of classics around everywhere and people keep pointing them out there's an XR 4x4 outside which I'm going to show you in a second that's got some head gaskets got to be done on it that's going to be on the channel as well so make sure that you watch the channel make sure you subscribe and get on the videos make sure you watch the videos because there's always little snippets that i try to include just like this one um i'm going to get the red gsi into the body shop at some point so um, we're going to get that in here and get it fully repainted so that's another episode if you're into your zlets uh, at the minute this triumph is in there uh, we're going to get that painted in flame red that's going to look a million dollars and that will be at the shows as well so if you're looking forward to all this happening and you want to join the channel subscribe make sure you subscribe smash that like button because that really helps me so we've got this quaif gearbox to go into it i have to explain it's quite a technical gearbox actually but it's a straight cut gearbox you can see there this one's going to be going into this car so this car is going to be a, a very very special little car um fully obviously stripped out um retro car now it looks really bad at the minute but nothing can't be sorted so uh, we've got plenty of panels for it plenty of work to be done on it and loads of projects going on so if you're enjoying watching all these projects i'm trying to crack through them one at a time um it's just obviously a ton of work to be done so i know a couple of people spotted this one outside this is obviously feeling sorry for itself as well this one's going to be getting repaired at the minute it's got head gasket problems it's a genuine xr 4x4 you can see the usual stuff with the folds it's not actually a totally rotten car which is quite good it's quite solid obviously it's not um in any means like a restored car but we have this on the channel as well so you can see lots of projects going on lots to, lots to get on with and um, just cracking through one by one and if you're enjoying it make sure you stick around so here's a little fun project see if you can name all the cars in this car lot so <laughs> got this mini it's getting painted and then i'll just go through the car lot and you can put in the comment section all the names of these different cars Unfortunately, we've just run out of time. It's actually starting to get dark now. Um, sun's going down, so we're gonna have to start packing up. But you can see, got all them nice fresh studs in there, nice fresh gasket on there. All the inlet side of it's done, obviously, just for the wiring. The wiring looms just got to go on there, all be plugged in. All the fuel lines, the injectors, whole inlet side's done, all the vacuum lines. So I promise you, in the next episode, it will be running. Unfortunately, I just run out of time in this one, and I want to smash up the uploads at the minute. Mm -hmm. 